Hey, I just want you to take a look at the difference between these two shots. Here's the first one. Hey, have you entered our PC giveaway yet? Because we partnered with Origin PC and we're giving away a machine that has an RTX 4090 and an i9 14900K. And the specs are wild, so link is in the description below. Go down and enter for free. And here's the second one. Hey, have you entered our PC giveaway yet? Because we partnered with Origin PC and we're giving away a machine that has an RTX 4090 and an i9-14900K. So it's a beast of a machine. Uh, go ahead, links in the description, enter for free. We can agree that the second one looks like the editor has a little more experience, like knows what they're doing a little bit more, right? Well, you should know that the second one only took an extra one to two minutes of work. And it was all like pre-made template stuff, stuff that literally any of you watching this video can do. And come closer stuff that any of you will be able to do by the end of this video. So my editor, Dustin, and I, I shouldn't even call him my editor. He's like, he's the second half of this channel, basically. He's the reason that we have shots like these in our videos. Dustin's gonna share with you a couple editing secrets and shortcuts today because editing shouldn't be hard and you shouldn't hate it. This video is gonna make your life a lot easier. Hey, streamers and gamers, before I hand you off to Dustin, I just I need to tell you that Owned.TV released a brand new free tool called Owned Pro that gives you a bunch of new tools to make your live streams pop. A couple examples here. Let's say you found an overlay that you really like but just doesn't fit your color scheme. Like, let's take this classic alpha gaming one right here. Whoever that guy is. But maybe you're not a blue streamer, maybe you're more of a red streamer. Well, with a couple little tweaks, this is now a red overlay, and you now have a completely unique overlay that nobody else has. Also, here's another tool they added that's a nice quality of life improvement. When you use their scene builder tool where you build your overlays and alerts, you can just copy the browser source and add it into OBS like usual. But let's say you need your camera to go between certain layers, maybe under the camera border, but in front of the main background. Owned Pro does this simple little clever thing where they give you separate links for the foreground and the background so you can pick and choose where all your stuff goes. Very convenient. And let's say you find an overlay that you really like, but you want to add a couple unique elements, maybe some widgets to it to make it pop and stand out and be more interactive. Well, Owned Pro has a simple browser tool that lets you search different widgets and things that you can just add right in there with no problem. What I'm trying to say is Own.Pro gives you a bunch of really cool and unique free and powerful tools that some of the other guys in the space just don't really do. So go check it out. I'll put a link to Owned Pro in the description down below. And now I'm gonna leave you in the very capable hands of the visual mastermind of this channel. But I'll be back for tip number five. Take it away, homie. Hello, I am back. Did you miss me from the last video I did, which was quite a long time ago at this point? If you didn't or you like Harris's face more than mine, well, you better get used to it. Let's not waste any time and get into these tips on how I would go about editing my first YouTube video like a pro. Tip number one is to edit your video in a chronological order. So first edit the footage where the main content is. If it's a live stream, then focus on cutting up the live stream to what you think is going to be the main part of your video. Or let's say you're doing a video more like this, more informational or tutorial based and has a talking head. Cut out all the bad takes, the dead space that you feel like is unnatural and so forth. Pretty simple, I think you guys get the point. And as an example, your timeline should go from looking something like this to like this. The reason you want to do this is because you may actually waste a lot of time if you spend too much time trying to add in B-roll, graphics, or text as you go along. Or maybe you're not really sure what B-roll you need or cutaway shots. So if you cut up the A-roll, you could go through and mark what kind of B-roll you need to add, which is what you add next is B-roll. Some people don't know what this means, but essentially it's a cutaway shot or something like this shot of me editing to add over the top of your A-roll. Once you add in all your B-roll, your timeline should look something like this. See all this stuff on the top. That's all the B-roll for this video. I also just turned this B-roll shot into the A-roll shot. Huge brain. I don't want to confuse you guys though, so we'll stay here for now. The next thing to add, I'm just calling the final touches. This is graphics, transitions, text, all the goodies that can really make the video flow better and well, just add in that stuff that the viewer may need for context or just to help with retention. We're going to talk about graphics in tip number three, 
But for now, I wanna talk about how I think the fastest method is to editing a roll. It's very straightforward, but I don't think people really think of doing it this way. So I'm in DaVinci Resolve, but most editing softwares will look pretty similar. The way I edit not only these videos, but my own videos on my YouTube channel, and even client videos in some cases, is by paying close attention to the audio waveform of the a roll and using your mouse and one hotkey. As an example, this video. The A-roll has a bunch of retakes where either me or Harris started a sentence and then started talking again. So I will click my mouse to the first take, listen for a bit, so I have an idea what's being said, and then I'll look at the audio waveforms and I can see that there's a bunch of similar takes. This one looks like it's the last one, so I'll click there, listen, and yes, I can see that's probably the take I want to use. So then I'll go to the beginning of that with my playhead and click what's called a backwards ripple delete. This is going to delete everything from my playhead to the previous cut. So notice I deleted all of those bad takes up until this point. Easy. This is what it looks like when I'm editing so you guys get an idea and bear in mind, I'm using other hotkeys as well. Trust me, I've done it a lot of different ways, including trying to use the cut page in Resolve and I found this to be the fastest. It also applies to any software too, not just DaVinci Resolve. This doesn't apply to all like ways that you film your video though. Kind of depends how you film your video. Like you're not always doing a talking head like this. Like as an example, a live stream won't be that way. There's pros and cons to editing like this. Sometimes I do miss things, but I usually catch it when I'm adding in the B-roll. Another reason why editing chronologically is just the way to go. I definitely recommend learning the hotkeys though. You can watch this video if you want to learn more about those. But anyways, let's, let's move on. Now, I know that if you're editing your first YouTube video, I'm assuming you may be fairly new to editing and well, adding graphics, text, transitions, all that good stuff can be really hard because you may have to look up a ton of tutorials on how to do what you want to do. I mean, that's how you found this video. So for tip number three, my advice is to utilize templates. Let me explain what templates are. Most of the time for a YouTube video, you're going to want a graphic like this that reminds you to go like this video and subscribe if you're enjoying so far because it's free and it helps out the channel. Or maybe one like this that reminds you that we launched a new website with new merch, like with what I'm wearing here. And if you become a member of the channel, you can save $5 on any merch that you buy. So you're welcome. Now to create that stuff from scratch, yes, I could create it from scratch, but if I can find something that's already made and modify it to fit what I'm looking for, I'm definitely gonna do that instead because I don't got time for that when Harris wants me to turn a video around the same day after he finishes filming and took a week to get me the footage. Did I say that out loud? He didn't hear me. Also listen to stream beats. But seriously though, I've been using templates for years and there's a lot of different options out there. But one of my favorites is Envato Elements, mostly because it's very affordable, like 200 bucks a year, I think. Don't quote me on that. And there's so many extra things you can get besides just templates. You can get music, stock video, sound effects, transitions, fonts, and a ton more from the site. And most of the time they include a tutorial on how you can customize them to your liking. You can usually even customize them even more than what they will show you in their tutorials, but you probably won't do much of that until you're a bit more advanced. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check it out. It's an affiliate link, so it helps me if you use it. If not, well then, that's fine too, I'll just be much poorer. Now the final tip I'm going to give you, but stick around because Harris has one too, has to do with color grading. Color grading can be very intimidating to add on top of editing, graphics, sound, and all that stuff. But it's very important because it just can add that extra pop to a video. In fact, I'm going to give you a freebie just for sticking around this long in the video. So when it comes to color grading, you may have heard of something called a LUT. It stands for lookup table, and it's basically just an Instagram filter for your video footage. But LUTs can do a lot of different things, and there's a ton out there that can make your footage just look like crap, and I don't want you spending money on LUTs that just suck. So I'm giving you five of my finishing LUTs for free. They are meant to be dragged on top of your footage to give that extra pop 
and make the video stand out just a bit more. Just shoot in a standard color profile on your camera, your phone, or whatever, like the one I'm using right now, and then apply the LUT directly to your footage. Another little tip too is yes, sometimes they can make your footage look good right after applying them, but sometimes because of your lighting situation and a number of different factors, these LUTs can account for, it can enhance your footage too much. So just scale back the intensity of the LUT by maybe 30% or maybe even 50% until you get something that works better for you. Now, hopefully these tips made sense and hopefully this last tip from Harris also makes sense. I'll see you guys later though. I know, don't miss me too much, okay? I got one more for you and I think you're gonna like this one. This one is gonna make your editing self thank your filming self because this one makes the editing process so much easier. There are little things you can do during the filming process to make things like adding color and adding audio effects easier. During that intro shot with the before and after, obviously on the after, Dustin added some color and some audio effects and added some templates and animation, but I did a couple things between the shots too. First thing I did is turn on an edge light behind me. It's very difficult to make yourself pop with color correction if you haven't already made yourself pop with lights. When I shoot, I typically use two lights. I use a key light to obviously <laughs> light my face, and then I use an edge light to separate myself from my background. That probably took me an extra three minutes to set up, and that's not something you wanna to try to fix in post. You can, but you don't want to. The other thing I did was to eliminate room reverb. And again, you can make adjustments in post to do that, but it's never gonna be as good, and it took me, again, two minutes to fix it before I started shooting. I brought the microphone closer to myself to improve my signal to noise ratio, and then I put up a moving blanket, a hanging moving blanket behind the camera, just to catch a bunch of my voice before it starts bouncing all over this room. And I mean, we're talking like an extra five minutes of setup for this whole thing to save you hours of frustration in the edit. So give that a shot, give all of these a shot, and let me know which one of these you liked the most, found the most interesting, maybe, spark the most ideas. And if you don't have any thoughts on that, just leave your favorite emoji in the comments down below for engagement for the video. Also, how was uh, how was Dustin? <laughs> I mean, I know Dustin's great, but I would like him to be in more of these videos. He's a YouTuber himself. In fact, I'll put his link in the description down below. But I know production and editing tips and stuff are things that you guys ask for a lot. So let me know what you think. Let's put his face in here a little bit more. I mean, he's just as much a part of this channel as I am. Uh, so I hope this helped you out. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, happy streaming, happy editing, happy, I don't know, whatever you want.